Dave, if we can pass okay. this over to you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, we have uh, a lot of questions actually coming in through the chat, and um, I think we're going to take some time to read those. But a as we go through those, if anybody who has a phone connection wants to raise their hand and ask a question, we can do that. But one requirement that I'm going to make of this is is that uh, you can't be using the, the computer microphone, that you actually have to be on the phone to do this. Um, I'd like to start with a question from Alan, and this is, what type of thermocouple is recommended for main steam lines, and what accuracy can we expect? Alan, what's your temperature range of the main steam line? Um, don't know if we're going to back. Okay, we'll we'll come we'll come back to that if, well, if Alan double you know, Actually, we can kind of throw this back at him. Uh, excuse me, Bill, but I think with the most of your main steam lines, you're going to be down within the range of an RTD. And I would highly recommend an RTD, but I would probably use a transmitter with it as well. I just would not mount the transmitter near the head of the RTD. Right. Yeah, that's. I, w I was going to mention that too. A lot of uh, steam lines are within that, you know, below the 500C range. Um, the only time where there could be an issue is if, um, you know, I've seen where in some process where they inject steam into a process to heat it a little bit, you get a little bit of water hammer happening, and that can be a little too high of a shock for an RTD to survive. But if it's just a regular steam line, um, you know, then the RTD probably is the best choice. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Mark. How long would you say a thermocouple was expected to last? Yeah, there it's going to really depend on the, the temperature that it's used at and the kind of atmosphere that it's in, how much protection that it has. You know, there are some thermocouples that are used just single use for, I, I think of some of the applications in the metals industry where they'll just dip it into a vat of molten aluminum, for example, will take the temperature reading and then throw that thermocouple away. And, you know, it's just a single-use type thing. So it's anywhere from that to, you know, it could be, you know, a year or two before it drifts out of, you know, its, it's uh, accuracy range. Yeah, I would have to agree with if you If normal operation, I think after a year or two, you've got to start looking at it. You know, it's just, it's just depleting the voltage that's there. Okay. Well, I have another question from Marco. How would you test to see if you have a stray current? Can you measure that with a standard electrical multimeter? Yeah, that one I'm going to leave to you, Bill. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to take it. No. Yeah, sorry. Well, you've got well, a good one here, Mark. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, you know, it would typically depend on the you know, the electrical system within your factory, because I, I have seen applications and, and actually done some troubleshooting on things where uh, the, there were some ground loops where their electrical system wasn't all grounded, tied back to the same ground. And that can cause a problem, especially with thermocouples. Um, the other area where you can see issues there is actually with static electricity. Maybe you're blowing a, a dry powder down a pipeline. There's going to be a lot of static charges, and that, that can cause an erratic reading on a thermocouple. I the RTDs, oh. Go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. Yeah, the RTDs are going to be a little more resistant to that kind of thing. I think the hard thing here is if you stop picking up static voltage or noise, if you will, no matter where you are and no matter what the process, it's a hard thing to detect. There's no, you know, standard rule, this is how you're going to verify you've got a problem. But when you do have, or you suspect you have a problem, you've got to start grounding things all the way around. That is basically your answer is, well, I, I may have a static voltage problem. Let me ground my system and see if it solves the problem. But I've seen uh, erroneous issues on all electronic devices that come right down to this issue. And it's, it's not a clear, defined answer to that one. Right, That's a yeah. good question, Mark. It's a very good question. Okay. Uh, Carlos asks, uh, could, could you elaborate further on when a cold junction is created on a thermocouple run and what is the best way to compensate for it? Well, the, the, the cold junction is used as a reference point so that you know 
uh, what what voltage the or so that you're able to measure the voltage from the thermocouple. You know, for example, a lot of thermocouples will use the ice pointer, zero degrees C. And so right at zero, your thermocouple is going to be reading, you know, essentially zero volts. But as you go up in temperature, you're going to start seeing or being able to measure that. So it's just used as a reference so that you're able to measure that voltage of the thermocouple. Okay. Um, I have a question from Andrew, and actually I can answer this one. He asks, can you email out copies of this PowerPoint? And yes, we're going to send out a follow-up email. It's going to link to a recorded version, and it's going to link to the PowerPoint itself. Um, I have another question from Siebel. Um, where do you use type J, and where do you use type K thermocouples? Well, a, a type K is typically used for higher temperatures. Uh, they're good up to, I you think know, like we, we rate a lot of ours to about 1850 degrees F. And in, in larger wire sizes, the type Ks can actually go up to about, uh, I think the standard says 2156 F. I think if my memory is right there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that, where it's, it's real temperature dependent. And that's where the screen, one of the slides, I said we really want to download if you can. It's really worth going back to acquire because it's really so temperature dependent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing there, too, that I, I mentioned earlier is with the type J, one of the conductors is iron. And if you're using it in an oxidizing atmosphere, that can corrode real quickly and cause your thermocouple to drift really fast, whereas throwing a type K in there, that isn't going to be an issue as much with the type K. Now, would you also agree, Bill, that to try to select a thermocouple where your temperature range is more in the median of its ability. For instance, if you had a type T thermocouple and your temperature that you were running at was 700 degrees, yes, the type T would read it, but that's at the very top end. Right. Where if you were with a type K, you'd be kind of in the lower end or J, you'd be in the middle. It would be a better choice. Right. Actually, the way the, the thermocouple accuracies are specified is by segments of their total temperature range. You know, for example, we have um, a type J and going from 32 to 527 degrees Fahrenheit, the special limits accuracy is plus or minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit. But as soon as you get over that 527 number, it's 0.4 percent of the temperature reading which is going to be a much larger number than that 2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, it does, you do, you do need to pay attention to that and choose the thermocouples that your temperature you're measuring is essentially right in the, the middle of its range. Oh, that was a very good question. Okay, I have an, another one. This one's from Jamie. What kind of devices are available to calibrate thermocouple and troubleshoot wiring issues? Ooh, I don't know, Harold, can you take that one? I yeah, I don't know if there's actually a way that you can calibrate a thermocouple. What you can do is you can take a thermocouple transmitter and calibrate it. So you have your thermocouple attached to your transmitter, which is going to give you a 4 to 20 milliamp output, and you can do your calibration in the transmitter. You can't actually do anything to the thermocouple itself. And the okay. second part of that question was, if you could repeat it, Dave. Okay. Um, uh, uh, troubleshoot wiring issues. Is there a device for that? Well, well, yeah. You know, none that I really know of. The you know the the, the extension wire. You know, I, I guess it'd just be a, um, you know, just a little continuity check to make sure that it's not broken or um, has any issues like that. Now, you should be able to take a millivolt reading at the head of the thermocouple and a millivolt reading at the end of the thermocouple wiring. Mm -hmm. And oh, you should yeah. have the same reading. If that's not the same reading, you've got an issue somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. 